This is mental. Hey guys, Jonathan here at Shadow Foam, and I thought I had every Makita tool I was ever gonna need. This was our Mark II Makita power tool wall. And after the first one, I kind of learned what I wanted, what I needed, I changed it, added some stuff, changed some stuff to brushless, and I thought that was it. And that was until I saw this flipping train horn, which is absolutely bonkers. If you've not seen or heard how loud these are, it's flipping insane. I got this from America, from Impact Train Horns. Put the links in the description, and it is flipping mental. So. Before though, we start taking this out and about, testing it properly, I've got to get it protected in some shadow foam, absolutely. And I don't think the space for it in the wall. I don't think really it lends itself to going in the wall, to be honest, I feel like this needs a case. And what better than a map pack case? Because everybody has got some spare. Anyone who uses Makita tools will know that these cases get chucked in all the time with loads of deals. Like, this was a multi-tool kit that I got. You get one of these boxes thrown in. They're not great, the latches aren't ideal. But I've got it, it's sat here doing nothing, and I think it's gonna fit this train horn, or at least I hope it does. I mean, from the looks of it, it's a little bit too big either way. But these horns do unscrew, so I'm sure there's a way I can put some Mac Pack inserts in there, I can put this in there with a couple of batteries, and have a really good kit, and then it'll use this, make use of this Mac Pack. So that's the plan for today, plus testing it and seeing if we can scare anyone with it. <laughs> that's pretty loud. Right, so they are the inserts we're gonna need. We've got three 50 mil Mac Pack inserts in teal, and we've got a 30 mil, and that should fill this case right to the top. So we're gonna fill up the box all the way to the top with foam, and then we can go layer by layer and cut this in, because it's quite a complex shape. This is gonna be quite similar to the Ryobi bag that we did. So that was like a quick draw bag, it had an impactor and a combi drill, and they were like face up like this. And I think that's the way that we do this. I'm not entirely sure how these cones are gonna go, but they do unscrew. So we're gonna unscrew them and have them separate. They come out quite quickly and easily. So we'll do that, we'll cut them in separately, and then we also wanna include a couple of batteries and maybe even a charger, but I think we might be pushing it with the charger, but we'll, we'll soon find out. So what we'll do now is I'll take these cones off and I'll rough out a bit of a layout and see how everything's gonna go. Right, so I'm thinking for the layout, we're gonna go for this right in the center, as far over to this side as I can, and then that will give me room for these two long cones to go left and right, which should be good, and then I'm gonna put the short cones underneath somehow i'm not exactly sure how because we've got loads of depth in this box i'm pretty confident these will fit underneath so that'll be the cone sorted and then this section here is really large but quite shallow so i don't think that's going to take up too much room so i'm hoping once this gun comes out we can have two batteries up here don't think the charger but we'll see so a job like this a task like this usually I have to just go stage by stage so the way i'm going to do it i've got this full stack here i'm going to cut all the way through this top insert because we know we're 100% have to go all the way through the top one, even this section here, which is 30 mil. The reason why I'm going for 30 mil on the top is because that section there is quite shallow. So that section won't cut any deeper than 30 mil, but the rest of it will. So we'll cut through the top, then we'll use that as a profile to cut through the next layer, which will cut this deeper section, cut, 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 all the way through. And then once, that, once this item's in, we'll then be able to see quite clearly where these horns can go. So that is it, let's get cutting. So when it comes to cutting, all we're gonna need is one of our basic cutting kits. These come free with orders over 60 pounds or you can order them separately too for 14.99. You've got everything in I'm gonna need for this job. You've got the scalpel, five blades, the forceps for putting the blades on the scalpel. It's got the anti-cut gloves, the instructions, the sticker, everything you're gonna need. And it's everything I'm gonna need as well in this video. That's all I'm gonna use. So I get my glove on, get the scalpel going, and let's get cutting. And there it is, all done. And that is a pretty complicated insert, but Matt had the timer running and that took me just under an hour to cut this 3D insert. I'll talk you through the process back to front because that's the way I'm remembering it right now. You have a future in the past.
So I spray glued it all together. Big tip when you spray gluing layers together is to save all the pieces. You can see in that kind of high speed cutting frame just now, I've left all the pieces all around the desk and that was kind of on purpose because I knew I needed them again. So once I've got all the layers, I kind of jigsaw the bits back in, spray glue it, and then take those pieces back out and glue them together. And basically the off cuts are the perfect masking. You don't need any masking tape. You don't have to worry about overspray with the glue because you don't want glue on the inside. Because imagine if I oversprayed glue in this insert and then stuck that horn in there, it's gonna get all glue on it, which we don't want. So masking it off is easy if you save all your off cuts. That is the first top tip. We start top down and the first thing I did was cut this 30 mil insert and I basically placed this face down on that, cut around the profile and I lifted it out of the way and to get the next layer, fortunately for me, I actually have this impact gun here. So I have the same one without a train horn attached to it. So I was able to use that to get that deep profile. You can see there, obviously this train horn attachment is only thin and narrow, whereas that is the main bit that we need to cut in. So I was able to cut that We've cut quite deep. You'll see this train horn absolutely disappears here. I'm gonna slot it in there. And then we've put some finger pulls here so I can get it out easily enough. And rather than cutting all the way through and weakening it, we just thought we'd have that as a separate piece that just pops on, holds everything in place, and that's great. So that's the main part, the train horn. As you can see, underneath this head, we've got a space for two batteries. They are pretty simple, they're just squares. We've put them all the way through, pretty much to the bottom. And these drop back to back, all the way in. And we've got two finger pulls there to get them out, so that's perfect. So with the horns, we cut the deep ones in first. And exactly the same as everything else, it's just place it where you want it to go, cut round it, peel back the foam. But obviously with this, most of the inserts, I was cutting all the way through. So it's just cut around it and then keep cutting around it. You know, make sure you've got a cutting mat. We've got loads of these available on the website, shadowfoam.com. So make sure you've got one of those. The other thing I tend to do is lift it up off the surface so I can cut through. But once we'd cut the two long horns into the insert, I was able to lift them out, copy that profile onto the insert below, and then we've, what we've done is we've double stacked these. So we've got our two short inserts drop down right into the bottom to allow the longer horn to sit on top. And that way we can get all four in the one insert, nice and safely, nice and protected. And then that goes over the top. And that is the foam insert all done. Pretty pleased with that. That's everything in there. So all I've got to do now is chuck it in the case. So there we go, all finished. And it fits in there like a glove. And I'm pretty happy to be using up one of these Mac packs because they are just sat around. I don't like getting rid of them, but there you go. Now I've got a train horn in there and it's looking great. So when we've used Mac pack inserts for this, so these inserts are available on the website, shadowfoam.com. They come in seven different colors. They come in 30 mil and 50 mil and they're available in twin packs. So you can get inserts for your Mac pack and organize this exactly as we've done here if you want to. And also, if you enjoyed this video and you like seeing tools getting organized or quirky stuff like this train horn, make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the bell icon so you don't miss any of our future videos. And let's go and test this out, what I wanted to do when it first arrived. And now it's in Shadow Foam, let's go and give it a test. So I've come over to the Makerspace to give this a test because Shadow Foam is full. I don't want to scare everyone to death over there. They're on machines and all kinds. And over here, it's early. Not too early, but there's nobody here at the Makerspace. And if you don't know what this Makerspace is, click the link, go back. We built this huge Makerspace in 100 days, but let's give it a blast. <laughs> that, is, that is loud enough, holy moly. That has, so that has set my Apple Watch off, which is saying it's over 100 decibels. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, why not check out some of our others? We've got new videos coming out every week. And Colin Furs, what's the quickest way for people to see these videos?